Why China could become biotechnology frontrunner in the near future? The effort of a little-known Chinese biotech firm to produce a COVID-19 vaccination received a major boost when Beijing granted the company permission to perform large-scale human trials on Chinese soldiers. Can the world profit from the rapid pace of Chinese biotech without entering ethical and regulatory limbo? Will China become a biotechnology forefront runner soon? Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Thank you for joining us today. Today we will be speaking about why China could become a biotechnology front runner soon. Stick to the end and watch the entire video to get all the details. Also, remember to like, share, subscribe, and click the bell notification. All right, then let's get started. 200 million Chinese residents will reach 60 by 2020, and one in every four cancer cases happens in China now. Demographic needs in aging population societies are driving up healthcare costs worldwide, and the drug and biotech industries are expanding in response, particularly in China, which is actively heading in this direction. Biotechnology in China's industry profile contains top-line qualitative and quantitative summary information such as market size and growth rate, forecast to 2024. The profile also includes description of the sector's major participants, significant financial indicators, and a study of competitive pressures. The biotechnology market includes developing manufacturing and marketing products based on cutting-edge biotechnology research. Between 2015 and 2019, the Chinese biotechnology market had total revenues of $18.8 billion, reflecting a compound annual growth rate CAGR of 5%. In 2019, the medical and healthcare category was the most profitable in the industry, accounting for $18.4 billion in revenue, or 97.8% of the total market value. Because of these substantial expenses involved with their R&D, biotech companies will have a more difficult time compensating for COVID-19 supply chain interruptions than pharma. The rapidly shifting regulatory landscape and mature innovation ecosystem drive tremendous value creation in Chinese biopharma. According to Grady, Tianjin-based Cancino Biologics claimed in a Hong Kong stock exchange statement that China's Central Military Commission had cleared the door for the People's Revolution Army to inject soldiers with 85 and cov the company's principal vaccine candidate for a one-year term. Medical innovation and investments in China have some experts expecting that the country could soon become a biotech powerhouse. I believe that the next school-level firm in healthcare could come from China. My Biomed CEO and founder Jackson Zhu Wyan believes China is truly open to new ideas. In recent years, healthcare innovation has accelerated from artificial intelligence and digital pathology to genomics and stem cells, with several startups creating crossovers between biotechnology and IT, including big data and precision healthcare. Zhu Zun, president of research BGI, praised the price of growth while cautioning that technology is a double-edged sword and asked for further discussions on innovation regulation and accountability. There might not be a clear resolution to fix problems, but it is critical to keep the debate about biotech going amongst different stakeholders to ensure we are not killing valuable technologies, you said. On the other hand, he continued, it is critical to guarantee that we discuss cutting edge research and innovation and scientific responsibility. A Chinese researcher who claimed last November that he assisted in creating the world's first genetically edited humans, twin girls born in the same month, may represent the ethical gray area that those at the forefront of biotech are grappling with as global innovation continues to outpace regulation. Kong Yali, a professor at Peking University's Medical Department of Ethics, described Chinese scientists as attentive and dedicated but motivated by a sense that they need to catch up, which has led to controversy in certain situations. No country is impeccable administration, but we must admit our flaws and conduct risk assessments to protect public safety, said Professor Kong. My role should be to assist the biotechnology community and scientists in self-reflection. The Chinese government is working hard to solve some of the ethical gray areas that the biotech industry faces with new data gathering laws that go into effect today, including stricter privacy protection measures and more thorough consistent provisions. When it comes to data privacy and biotechnology, regulations are becoming more mature, as you said. How to preserve participant rights is a heated topic in the community. China's biopharmaceutical ecosystem is undergoing a seismic transition away from generics and towards innovation, with a far-reaching repercussions from patients and industry peers. In this article, we check the pulse of China's thriving innovation ecosystem, examine the key trends driving the biopharma business, and discuss how international pharmaceutical companies can capitalize on innovation prospects in the world's second-largest healthcare market. Chinese biopharma innovation quickly became a prominent story evidenced by huge value creation in global capital markets. The market capitalization of publicly traded Chinese biopharma innovation firms on the NASDAQ, Hong Kong Stock Exchange HKAX, and Shanghai Stock Exchange Science and Technology Innovation Board STAR has increased from $3 billion in 2016 to more than $380 billion in July 2021. China-based biotechnology companies counted for $180 billion of total that. Chinese players' public debuts have also quickened, with 23 IPOs scheduled for 2020 alone. Indeed, Chinese biotechs are leading in IPO fundraising, with China accounting for seven of the world's top 10 largest biopharma IPOs from 2018 to 2020. 
Regulatory reforms, the establishment of bioclusters in cities such as Suzhou, talent returning from abroad, and the opening of China's capital markets have all contributed to Chinese biopharma's rise to the global innovation stage. McKinsey maintains the China Drug Innovation Index to understand better how China's biopharma innovation ecosystem is evolving to have a more non structure of the dynamics driving its growth CDII. The survey, which was first conducted in 2016, asked industry experts to rate five factors that promote healthy biopharma information. Policy environment divided into regulatory reforms and market access policies, funding, research and development, R&D capability, local innovation output and integration with global markets. According to McKinsey, for the 2020 edition of the CDII, they questioned 129 industry experts, two-thirds of whom are CEOs of senior executives, to determine the dimensions in which China has made the most progress and those that still require attention. According to our findings, industry sentiment is gradually improving with the average rating across all eight categories from 4.5 to 5.5 between 2016 and 2020. Six major lessons emerge from delving further into each area. The regulatory environment dimension improved the most, with the score rising from 4.0 in 2016 to 6.2 in 2020. The scale and speed of the reform are unprecedented in Chinese history. A 2015 overhaul to bring China's pharmaceutical and regulations in line with international standards had facilitated China's 2017 accession to the International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals Human Use. These initiatives facilitated the global integration of China's drug discovery and development ecosystem. In the meantime, according to CDE data, measures to expedite new drug reviews such as increasing the number of staff at the Center for Drug Evaluation CDE from 150 in 2015 to 700 plus in 2018 supplemented by over 600 external committee members, helped clear a backlog of 20,000 applications in two years. Furthermore, according to statistics from GBI, a provider of intelligence and analytics for the Chinese pharmaceutical business, the CDE has authorized over 200 new drug applications and DAs between 2016 and 2020. Parallel to this, China's National Medical Aid Products Administration NMP expedited new drug approval procedures commencing implementing priority reviews in 2016. According to NMPA data, the proportion of medications under priority review climbed from 14% in 2016 to 77% in 2019. According to CDA data revealed at the 2021 Chinese Society of Clinical Oncology Conference, the NMPA added conditional licenses based on clinical trial data in 2018 and has since issued 34 conditional approvals. Drug registration regulations were introduced in July 2020, opening up a new pathway for bringing through cures with over 70 pharmaceuticals earning the designation by August 2021. These measures aided in reviving a robust innovation pipeline. A score of 6.0 in 2020, the second highest and main indicator, demonstrates significant confidence in the funding climate for Chinese biopharma. The most accessible source of financing is projected to be venture, capital and private equity, fundraising and investing. Meanwhile, stock exchanges, particularly Hong Kong's HKEX and Shanghai's technology-focused Starboard, have emerged as a vibrant financing channel accounting for 21 of 23 Chinese biotech IPOs in 2020, two on the Nasdaq. 12 on the HKEX and 9 on STAR, led by Everest Medicine's $520 million debuts on the HKEX. Overseas returnees with decades of drug development experience and the brisk growth of contract research organizations, CROs, and contract development and manufacturing organizations, CDMOs, aided in raising the R&D score in 2020 to 25.5, .5, a slight gain from 2016. The expansion of CRO and CDMO infrastructure has aided biotechnology innovation, allowing China to emerge as a leader in some service sub segments. We see Aptech and Pharmaron, for example, are currently the world's largest producers of preclinical chemical services. Surveys also show that clinical development and chemistry manufacturing and control EMC capabilities need to increase to sustain ecosystem expansion. Nonetheless, the CDII reports that there are still gaps in academic research, medical condition, discovery, and the infrastructure for technology transfer from academia to business. Many Chinese people are optimistic about the biotechnology industry's prospects due to its rapid development, competitive climate, and large talent pool. Zhu Wiang, who noted that China is quickly catching up, stated that the country needs to start thinking about future of 5G, more R&D to foster a better understanding of intercultural differences to encourage multinational companies to work in China and ways to leverage Chinese innovations globally. Applying China speed to foreign markets does not work, Zhu Wian observed, so we need to manage that. We can conduct short studies and research, but greater collaboration and integration are required. Well, that's all we have today. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.